Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and black or Esper colored graveyard combo deck built around Rally the Ancestors. This instant for X and double white returns each creature card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, although we have to exile those creatures at the beginning of our next upkeep. So sometimes you'll see Rally played in decks that have some sacrifice outlets that can sacrifice all the creatures we reanimated. So instead of getting exiled, they go back to the graveyard and so you get some death triggers as well. We don't have any sacrifice outlets, instead we're playing a whole bunch of creatures that will die on the spot if we get them back with Rally, because they have zero power and toughness. So we're talking about all these X spells that can be cast for X equals zero, so if we cast a Rally for just double white, we can get all of these back out of the graveyard. Now of course they don't really do much since they instantly die, but we can kind of reap the rewards if we have these blood artist-like creatures on the battlefield, like Zulaport Cutthroat, Wrote, Cruel Celebrant and the Sadistic Pilgrim. So now for each one of those zero mana creatures entering the battlefield and dying, we get to drain the opponent for one for each one of these creatures we have on the battlefield. So that's our eventual goal to win the game. Now we do need to make sure we can fill the graveyard and string together enough of these zero mana creatures to be able to set up this combo. So to help us, we've got the Snarling Gorehound, a 1-1 one -one with Menace, saying whenever another creature with power two or less enters a battlefield under our control, we get to surveil one. So that can help fill the graveyard and dig towards Rally the Ancestors if we don't have it already. So if we do have Gorehound on the battlefield and cast a medium-sized Rally to get back a few creatures, we'll also get to surveil a whole bunch more to maybe find a second Rally to set up lethal on the following attempt. And then we also have a bunch of card draw engines, including the new Satoru, a 2-3 with Menace, essentially drawing a card whenever we cast a zero mana creature, or if we get back one or more of them out of the graveyard. So this one only draws us one card if we cast a big rally, whereas Grim Harrispecs and Midnight Reaper will draw a card for each creature that dies. Harrispecs doesn't cost us any life, but also doesn't draw any cards if the opponent takes out the Harrispecs itself, whereas Midnight Reaper will cost us one life whenever a creature dies, but also includes itself so if the opponent removes it, at least we'll get a card in return. So we've got nine of these card draw engines, and typically we want at least one of them in our opening hand, and then once we deploy them, we can start casting these free creatures, which will essentially replace themselves, since we'll draw off Satoru, Horuspex, and Midnight Reaper, so we can hopefully string together a whole bunch of them, they'll end up in the graveyard, at some point we'll find Rally, and then Rally plus one of these creatures can win us the game. So yeah, that's our game plan in a nutshell. Of course we can also cast Rally for X equals two or three, if we end up with some of these more expensive creatures in the graveyard if the game drags on, so it's all about just filling the graveyard as quickly as possible and then setting up a rally for the win. And then our mana base has just lots of untapped dual lands, including the fast lands and some shock lands, so we hopefully don't have to take too much damage while not having to deal with any lands entering tapped. And then mana confluence, also kind of a necessary evil, although it does actually have a little bit of utility in this deck, since it can maybe help us get back chamber sentry, since that requires all five colors, but uh, that doesn't come up very often. But we could potentially run even more copies of mana confluence if you want to make that happen. And then, of course, sometimes you do end up casting these creatures if things don't go according to plan. And then a chamber sentry, a creature that can also remove its counters to deal damage. Hanger Backwalker can slowly grow over time, and when it dies we'll leave behind Thopter tokens. Stone Coil has protection from multicolor to reach and trample, and to reach is especially relevant now with a slick shot being added to the format, so that can potentially soak up an attack. And then there's a Ugin's Conjurant, which is kind of a vanilla creature that can prevent damage by removing plus one counters, but for the most part we'll try to cast these for X equals zero to get immediate benefit from our card draw engines and our life drain creatures. Another card that's worth exploring in this archetype is Forever Young, a two mana sorcery that can essentially put all the creatures from our graveyard back on top of our deck, so that if we have a card draw engine and something to drain the opponent, we can just stack all these zero mana creatures back on top of the deck and draw into them while draining the opponent and providing even more card advantage. So that's also potentially uh, worth trying alongside Rally the Ancestors, but this is the build we're going for today. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's not gonna do a whole lot until we play Midnight Reaper. So it feels a little sluggish. Especially on the draw, we'll need something a little bit more explosive. Alright, this counts. Sadly, do have to put one on the bottom. Make it Dark Slick Shores. Keep double white for Rally. 
So pretty good six card hand, all things considered. And I'll wait to play these until we maybe deploy our respects first. Our opponent playing the green devotion deck, which has fallen off a little bit recently since Karn has been banned. Okay, land is good. So the plan is next turn her specs, draw a bunch of cards, fill the graveyard, and then if we get lucky, turn four we could already win if we find one of our two drops that drains the opponent, and then rally with enough creatures in the graveyard. So finding the land here is useful. And then probably fine to just draw and then surveil. Satoru could be worth keeping, and then next turn I have two card draw engines, and then keep Hanger back in hand. Yeah, that might be alright. We're not under a ton of pressure right now. And I'll just go face. And then I'll probably surveil before drawing to maximize our chances of hitting more zero mana creatures. Let's get moving. Cavalier of Thorns, okay. As long as they don't mess with our graveyard, we should be alright. But next turn they can make quite a lot of mana. So we don't have much time here to make something happen. Alright, so play Satoru, leaving white untapped. I'll see. I think this is better, so we have black-white available to play Cutthroat and friends. And then another Gorehound is not quite good enough. Could also draw, surveil and then draw. Don't hit that idea either. Draw land. Keep that one. Find Cutthroats. Okay, and then play Sentry. Could already go for Cutthroat now and then start draining. Yeah, I guess that's alright. And then save Rally for next turn, assuming I still have a graveyard. And then now I maybe want to surveil before drawing since I really want to maximize my chances of hitting another zero mana creature, which is a way we could potentially win right now. But if we don't get there this turn, there's a good chance we get there next turn. Yeah, now that there's no Karn to get Graveyard Hate, I'm not sure what our opponent can do to mess up our game plan, other than just killing us, of course. And with enough mana, anything is possible. Pilgrim, I don't want. So next turn we can Rally for two, which will also get back all these Cutthroat-type cards. And uh, yeah, we're at the end of the line. I can also discard Cutthroat if I'd like just to have more of those effects to get back with a rally. So we'll see. Can our opponents either exile our graveyard or present 22 damage? Mystic is mana neutral with Nykthos. Actually, nets them mana with Kiora untapping Nykthos. So they've got about 16-ish mana here. Another Cavalier. That's fine. If our opponent were to cast Ulamog, exiling my lands, I can still cast Rally for zero. So yeah, there we see Ulamog hit the graveyard. So I don't think Ulamog is necessarily game over for us. So Kiora untaps Nykthos. So 
So they've got 10 mana floating, double castle untapped, a ley line. Okay, anything else? Another one, just increasing their devotion for future turns, but hopefully there won't be one. All right, they had another Nykthos, fair enough. So what's the grand finale here? 18 mana floating now, two cards left in hand. And there's Ulamog. Well, if they have a second Ulamog, they can just exile all our lands. Goes for Harispec's Cutthroat, that's acceptable. So 11 mana here. 12 mana for creatures. And a Cityscape leveler. Okay, that's fine. Had they targeted my lanes with Ulamog, they maybe could have prevented more. So yeah, pretty good turn for the opponent as it turns out. But I'm still liking my chances. Can jump or take it, doesn't really matter. Okay, so how many cutthroat type creatures do we have? Cutthroat, Pilgrim. So two right now. So maybe start with Walker, X equals zero. Could have maybe played another Gorehound first as well. But uh, yeah, rally for two is the plan here. And that should be more than 14 damage. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Our opening hand needs to have at least one card draw engine, and if not, maybe it's still keepable if we have Gorehound and then ways to enable it. But of course, Rally is also a good incentive to keep. Put on blue-black. Gonna decline to make a 1-1. One, one. And then we'll see if our opponent keeps up interaction next turn. If we should be worried about removal, might play Celebrant before going for Satoru. Alright, I'll play Celebrant. Pretty important that Satoru sticks to landing. Okay, opponent's a flash deck. So we can certainly expect some counter spells and flash creatures. Take two for now. And, uh, yeah. Try Satoru next, I guess. Hope they don't remove it in response. It's gonna be a fairy mastermind, so they'll get to draw as well here. Alright. So we may as well keep going. Since the Mastermind only triggers once each turn. Well, so far so good. Stringing together some free creatures. And we already have Rally in hand. If I had the uh, Reaper or Harrowspex in hand, I maybe would have saved a creature. But uh, we may as well go for it while Satoru is in play. Alright. We're making it count. I'm getting pretty lucky here, even without any surveils. Okay, and then don't mind trading for Mastermind, since we have more replacements in hand. But yeah, technically we could just win the game next turn if uh, we resolve another creature and then rally for zero. Opponent passes. So how about Pilgrim? Attack with Satoru. And then hope our opponent taps out. 
another Night Bonder, that's fine. So we could just let the trade happen here. They do still have two mana untapped, so I don't quite trust the situation to go for Rally. Question is whether I play Cutthroat here or just keep up my two mana. I'll keep up the two mana, because if they tap out, we could just win. Alright, perfect. Zax so equals zero. Get back. Eight creatures here, so that's 16 triggers. And then I guess uh, another eight from Pilgrim, since those are two separate triggers. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this is an easy mulligan. This I can keep. And then it's either Cutthroat or Gorehound that we get rid of. I'll eventually need a win condition, but I think Gorehound's important enough for the initial setup that I'm willing to keep both. And then we'll see what our opponent's up to. Turn one island. Should be able to resolve Satoru at least. And Sentry I can keep on top since we'll draw into it. So then we want to draw first and then surveil. do want to keep hitting my land drops. Another Gorehound, that's probably overkill. So... Could go for the blind draw, and then surveil. Find Harrispec, so now we know that we're actively looking for another land. So the question is, do I play Conjurance? If they remove Satoru next turn, I may regret not playing it here, but then again I also need an enabler for Harrispex, so I think I'll keep that one in hand for now. And then, ideally, draw a third land naturally. They will all be untapped for now. Aha, a mill deck. Well, as long as we find Rally, that could actually benefit us. But we don't have Rally in hand yet. Double Ruin Crab. Okay, so how does that change our philosophy here? Just want to maximize our chances of drawing into Rally right now. Courtyard I'll also need, although it's more likely for us to just draw a white source. Hmm, yeah, this is close. I guess I could just keep it, draw into it with Conjurance. Next turn they will mill us for a bunch. And then I have little control over what I'll draw next. So I don't think Courtier is good enough, actually. And then play Conjurance for zero. And then I'll Surveil twice and then draw. Godless Shrine, it is tempting. But yeah, let's say we draw Godless Shrine, next turn I can play Harris Specs, but it doesn't really do anything for me. Celebrants is kind of in a similar boat. Alright, drew the land anyway. So we can play Gorehound. Now it doesn't matter what we keep on top since they're just gonna mill it. And unfortunately we hit the rally. So I wouldn't be able to uh, draw that one. Otherwise we could set up lethal. Not quite next turn since we do need to get back our Celebrant and Cutthroat as well. So need at least X equals 2 on the Rally to win. Storefront will mill us for 12, essentially. So, yeah, I mean... This is gonna be... tricky. In a way, the mill deck is designed to beat us, but... If we already have the Rally in hand, it can just win us the game for us. Opponent mills 4 more. 25 cards left. Okay, so we'll attack. Could actually morph the Harris Specs just to trigger Gorehounds, but in the face of Double Ruin Crab it doesn't really matter. 
if we surveil or not. So I may as well play a 3-2. And then we're in a good position to string together a whole bunch of creatures if we draw an X spell next turn. And then if we can uh, translate that into a Rally the Ancestors, we should be good. Opponent with a Cacophony, milling eight. So that's another Rally gone, I believe that's the second one. So there's still two left and 16. And just a Mana Confluence, the draw. Yeah, we may be in trouble here. Attack all out. A little bit short of uh, getting back Chamber Sentry with the second Mana Confluence, we can actually do that. Fading Hope, that's fine. Although our opponent kept on top. So assuming it's a land, they mill for 6, another 4 is 10. So I may actually not want to play the Harris Specs because we might end up decking because of it. Although I can always stack triggers in such a way that we uh, first drain the opponent and then draw. So I think it's still okay to play. Alright, let's see what they can do here. Could just die. And that's rally number three gone. That's another six cards, and yeah, that's the final rally. So there's no way we can uh, get there. Yeah, that's why I wanted to just try our best to naturally draw the rally as soon as possible. Because once we let the opponent untap and mill us, there's no controlling our top decks with a Gorehound. So that's rough. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Keeper. Could use something that drains the opponent when our creatures die. But a Gorehound plus double hanger back will do a good job of sculpting our hand and filling the graveyard. Facing blue-black. And Thoughtseize will have a look. So likely takes Gorehound. So we're in for a slower matchup, hopefully. Which will give us time to leverage our graveyard. And there's Rally, so that's already a nice draw. Do need to make sure we hit our third land drop. For now Valky, so this must be a deck with Jace, which can plot Valky and then cast Tybalt. And then there's other ways to kind of cheat the Planeswalker into play with the three mana instance that exiles a card. Now Valky also gets to take a creature, so it is actually pretty good. Takes a high respects. Alright, Satoru was a nice draw. I'll cast it. I don't think I go double walker yet. I'll wait until we play Midnight Reaper next turn, hopefully. Maybe could have played one to try and hit my land drop in case they remove Satoru. Alright, opponent's got another Thought Seize, so a triple hand disruption here goes for a rally. So next turn they can potentially cast Jace if they have it in hand. Valky is uh, considering an attack. Okay, play Reaper. Does it resolve? Hanger back for zero. Wood draws two cards. And we'll play another one. And then hoping to find another rally, more zero mana creatures, and eventually one of our win conditions. Alright, Gorehounds will also come in handy, can play it alongside Cutthroat next turn, and hit for two. But let's see if our opponent can combo with Valky. There's white mana in there too. Get to untap. So Gorehound into Cutthroat. And then we typically want to prioritize white mana since we need double white for Rally and some of our win conditions. Opponent counters. So that's what the white is for. 
And that getting exiled is also relevant, because we may not be able to get it back with the rally. Trading for Valky I think is okay, opponent might have another one in hand, but we'll get to draw off Reaper if it trades and get Harris Specs back. And if they take it, we get to push more damage. Opponent's at 9. It's a bit of a strange game here, not your typical explorer or pioneer matchup. Okay, so I could cast this for x equals 4 just as a large creature, but with what we have in play, I think we'll get more mileage out of x equals 0. We can stack the surveil and draw triggers in such a way that we kind of alternate, but looks like they had a fatal push. Alright, so probably surveil before we draw. And keep conjurance. Just want to maximize our chances of drawing into Rally. Pilgrim I have to keep as well. And then we don't want to tap double white. So this will offset the life loss for Midnight Reaper. And we'll keep all the zero mana creatures on top now. Now I want to draw first and then surveil. So always be mindful of those Gorehound triggers. And Celebrants I could keep as well. So now we'll draw and then surveil. Does mean we kind of stop comboing off here, but with two of these wing conditions in play, our creatures also become quite threatening. Our opponent can transform Valky in a Harris Pax, but that's all right. And then we get to surveil once more. Do need more lands. Okay. Opponent takes a trade. Get our Harris Pax back. And our opponent's at 4. So they'll need something pretty special here. Can play Satoru, Harris Spex, and then Stone Coil. And Cutthroats I could keep, but let's be greedy and dig for a rally. In case something goes horribly wrong. And more zero mana creatures could also win the game without needing to attack. So I think again surveil before drawing. Keep that one on top. And this should do it. And again surveil before drawing. And there's Rally, so next turn we could have gotten back around 10 creatures out of the graveyard and probably put around 50 triggers on the stack. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, this hand's tempting. We're missing a card draw engine, but we do have Gorehound's double cutthroat, which by itself also lots of surveil, and then we already have our key card in hand. So I'll give it a shot. And then facing Kiruga means likely a Fires of Invention deck, which doesn't do a whole lot in the first couple turns other than maybe cast a Stomp from Bonecrusher. Maybe a temporary lockdown could be annoying. And then I need an extra white source, so Dark Slick Shores doesn't do much for me. And uh, yeah, I can wait another turn to play Stone Coil, I think. Unless I want to just guarantee that I hit my land next turn and make it a white land. Alright, fine. Another Gorehound. Hmm. Don't think that does it. So now we're in Stomp territory. 
At least we don't have to worry about lockdown. So I'll play cutthroat. I'll probably take something out in response. Could have maybe attacked first. Yeah, we're probably going to need a rally for x equals 2, assuming we need to get back cutthroat from the graveyard as well. Opponent lets it happen. And yeah, that's another Dark Slick Shores, not the land we need. So we'll attack. And then I'm not opposed to Chamber Sentry to surveil once again. So we currently have two zero drops in the graveyard. Gonna need to increase that number to set up a significant rally. Another Gorehound, so not getting the draws we need. No white mana, no zero drops. I see. Masterpiece. So that can enable a four drop here. It's gonna be a beanstalk for ramp. And there's a celebrant. Well, if our opponent's got a board wipe, we're gonna be sad. But uh, may as well commit. And I guess a board wipe here would deal a lot of damage on the way out, so maybe it's actually not a bad thing for us, assuming it doesn't exile our creatures. So a white source here could go a long way. There it is. So we'll attack. And then we've got Rally at the ready with currently three zero drops in the graveyard. So I don't think I need to do anything right now. Let the opponent make the first move. And then we can maybe respond with Rally. And Greater Tanuki getting a land. That's fine. So maybe this is a Discover combo deck with Quintorius. So if they cast Quintorius or Carnosaur, we can rally and response. Keruga in hand. Yeah, I don't really feel the need to cast rally, even though it could win us the game right now. I can just go to attackers, put them to one, and then rally's even more likely to win. And now Stone Coil can also be cast for zero to finish them off. So they kind of have to counter this. And then we have the instant speed win in hand. Alright, so I guess that did it. Very strange game. But yeah, I'm assuming our opponent was on Quintorius combo, which uh, if they cast the namesake card, they can just minus and essentially win the game on the spot by hitting spark double to make more copies of Quintorius and then uh, rinse and repeat until you drain the opponent to death onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Keeper. Gorehound into Satoru. Can start surveilling and drawing. And then maybe wait until we deploy Midnight Reaper before playing our creatures out. Opponent probably playing the new Slick Shot. Kumano could also technically exile our creatures once transformed. Light of the stage finds a lightning strike and a land. So, yeah, if I play Satoru, it's most likely going to get removed, but we have a backup. So I think we're okay with it. Another Satoru I don't really need. Could also play one creature out just to draw, but nah, I'll wait. Opponent does indeed take out Satoru. So to preserve my life total, I can just play a tap shrine and replay another Satoru. And another Conjurance I'll keep on top. Yeah, I'll uh, play one of these out. Now we first want to draw and then Surveil. And Sea Chrome Coast, I guess, is a second white source, which I'll eventually need. So 
So we'll draw and then surveil. Don't need that one. Yeah, let's play one more out. Hoping to find Rally, maybe one of our win conditions. And of course more zero mana cards. Gorehounds I could keep. If I draw it, I can play it with Godless Shrine at the cost of two life. Yeah, that might be alright. Still get to surveil here. And then Conjurant draws and surveils twice, so it's somewhat likely to find another zero mana card. So surveil first and then draw. Another Satoru. We already have a Midnight Reaper in hand, so doesn't seem necessary. Alright, so end of the line here. Attack for one. Now, it may not seem like we accomplished much, but we did fill the graveyard with quite a few creatures already for a potential rally. A robber is not going to trigger, at least. I have to imagine they have either Play With Fire or Monstrous Rage in hand, so I don't really want to put Satoru in harm's way. It's going to be another light up, finding Bone Crusher and Robber. Alright, Grim Harrow Specs, similar to Midnight Reaper, doesn't cost me any life at least. So, what to do here? Opponent next turn is gonna probably use the Bone Crusher, so at least if they stomp Reaper I get to draw, which is probably worth it. Interestingly, we can also morph the Harrow Specs if we just want to trigger the Gorehound. And probably okay to send the team. Now I guess Reaper gets exiled by the etching, so it doesn't actually draw us a card. Okay. Now we're worried about Ember Cleave killing us. So Reaper exiled because of etching. And attack for six. Robber still doesn't trigger, at least, but our life total is dwindling. There's the Monstrous Rage we were worried about, so they maybe wanted to play that before attacking to trigger Robber. Alright, found Chamber Sentry. So, run out Haru Specs, leaving white mana available. Can always play an untapped Godless Shrine if needed. And then this way we can maybe still cast a Rally if we draw it. So I think I'll go Surveil, Draw, Surveil, Draw. Gorehound, not quite good enough here. Found Cutthroat, Mana Confluence I don't want. I guess it saves me one life versus Godless Shrine, but it's not a huge difference. Okay, so yeah, I guess uh, we're in trouble here. I can play Pilgrim at the cost of two life to surveil, but it's not going to draw. And then we're dead to Ramanap Ruins, so I just have to play this tapped and pass. And somehow survive the incoming attack. So, have to make some blocks. So this technically has me falling to Three. So we're not dead to Ramana Ruins. And Etching dies, although I do lose all my other creatures. Yeah, I don't think uh, there's a better alternative. Alright, they had the Amber Cleave, so it didn't matter. So yeah, couldn't quite find our uh, Rally the Ancestors in time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. We've got our win condition, our card draw, rally, and then some enablers. Do need a second white source and a third land in general, and then hope uh, Midnight Reaper can stick around. Alright, Thraben Inspector points towards the Convoke deck. 
And we did find a third land, although sadly not a white source. So the opponent's deck is going to make lots of tokens. Typically a deck that can present lethal around turn 4 if undisrupted. There's a demolition, so they can already convoke. That's of course the key card in the deck that can make their turns a lot more explosive. Same as in standard. So there's Knight Errants. Maybe not as bad as uh, the venerated Loxodon would have been since it applies more pressure. We did find our second white. Alright, so play Midnight Reaper. Hope to draw into more free spells. And then next turn Rally to do the same. So could maybe Cutthroat and Rally for zero next turn. But I'll need more zero drops to make it lethal. I guess it's maybe worth it to just wait until I deploy another Cutthroat to play more of them out. There's a small chance they can remove Midnight Reaper. But most of these decks don't play any removal. Thalia can also tax or rally, so that'll slow us down. So right now we have three creatures in the graveyard. Which is not quite enough with double cutthroats. And Grim Harrispex doesn't change that. So let's say we play Harrispex. Play tap land pass next turn, hoping they can present lethal. Maybe we can even draw a few cards by chumping. And then turn after, I should be able to still play Cutthroat and rally for zero, which we're hoping is enough. All right. A warden's fine. So how much damage are we talking here? Probably gonna end up chumping a 4-4. If I chump with Cutthroat I could also rally for X equals 2 to get it back. Not sure if that's gonna be more beneficial. Looks like our opponents may be waiting to set up lethal next turn. Or they don't want to have us draw any additional cards. Locks it on attacks. Okay, so if I were to jump with Midnight Reaper, I get to draw two cards, one from Reaper, one from Harrispex. And then hopefully we find a few more zero mana creatures off of that. If I were to double block, then I do get to draw four cards. I lose a Cutthroat, so it increases my chances of finding zero mana creatures. But then I can't cast anything else that turn, so kind of a close call. But yeah, I assume that our opponent can kill us next turn, so I have to go for it. Found Celebrant, Mana Confluence, and another Rally. Hmm. That's probably not going to be good enough, is it? Unless we just draw off the Haru Specs and find more zero drops. Which I guess is possible. Don't have the mana to play two Rallies, and my creatures won't be able to block. So there's no point in casting it in the opponent's turn. Alright, I guess uh, I'll give this a try. So I'll draw three of our specs. And we get a redraw with Stone Coil. Now I guess we did gain a bit of life as well here, so possible we can survive an attack and then get there with another rally next turn. Alright, opponent's at 2, so if I were to attack with high respects, our opponent either takes it and dies, or trades and dies. So yeah, that should work. Yeah, now I'm wondering if I should have blocked with uh, Midnight Reaper at all. Because we got to draw 2 cards with it, but 
had I just untapped and cast Rally, I would have drawn three cards off of it, guaranteed. So, probably wasn't even worth it to block with a Midnight Reaper there. But I guess we got her nonetheless. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see our Rally the Ancestors combo in action. And yeah, the deck's certainly capable of some pretty unique kills. And uh, overall, if you're a fan of graveyard combo decks, this might be worth looking at. Of course, if you move to best of three, you'll have to contend with graveyard hate after sideboard, so things will get a lot more difficult. And this is kind of a glass cannon deck that doesn't have room for a whole lot of interaction, outside of maybe some hand disruption that you could bring in. But uh, yeah, I don't expect this deck to be particularly competitive in best of three, but for now it seems like a fun option for best of one at least. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.